Hey everybody, welcome back to our final episode of the evolution of the PS2 games of the Dragon Ball Z variety. Um, I wanted to do Infinite Worlds, but unfortunately that doesn't have a world tournament mode, so we're going to end it with Tenkaichi 3 here. Um, as usual, we're just going to watch the intro. Well, as soon as it pops up anyway, it's giving me a lot of screens. And there you go. Uh, it's not my favorite. I think it's just because after all, seeing all these intros throughout the years, uh, maybe we're just kind of getting a little sick of it. But I mean, it's still a great, amazing intro. It still looks fantastic, especially for a PS2 game. But it just, I don't know, the other ones I just think I like a little bit more. But I mean, it is so sad. I mean, you know, it looks fantastic for a PS2. But then I think in the PS3 era, um, I think that's really when these custom intros for these games to hype you up every time, they kind of just stopped. Which, yeah, it's one of those things where once you watch it maybe like a few times, you know, you end up skipping it. And I'm assuming that's kind of their their whole prerogative with this, that why they stopped that kind of stuff. But it was still just so much appreciated. So, just kind of scrolling through the modes, but like I said, we're going to do a world tournament. This one I'm not a big fan of. Um, it's five tournaments, but you can't actually pick which ones you want to play. Um, there's the world tournament regular, the big tournament, which is like the Hercule tournament, the Cell games, the Yamcha games, and uh, the other world tournament, if I remember correctly. Which you guys can double check in the video, but um, the one thing I do think is cool is I think every tournament except maybe the first one has like a special, essentially end boss that you face. But um, you can't choose the difficulties in these ones. It's just set difficulties. You can't choose when you want to play them. Like if you want to play a specific one, you have to just keep answering and exiting until the time comes out. I think like it updates an hour every single time and. Obviously it updates as you play other modes, I believe, but it's just so lame that you can't pick what tournament you want to play as, especially when there's characters locked behind certain ones. Like the Yamcha game, I believe, is uh, how you unlock Fasha, which is one of the female Saiyans that was in Bardock's army. But it's such a cool concept because they gave us so many tournaments in this one, but it's just so lame how they applied that. So as you, as you can see, we're going to go through all the, the roster here just to show how massive this roster is and just how giving they are in this game for, you know, everybody that's unlocked. You know, even the obscure guys like Cells, uh, the movie characters. I mean, you I think you pretty much have, if not all of them, almost every Dragon Ball Z character and you even get the GT characters all unlocked. Yeah, unfortunately, General Tao <laughs> doesn't have anybody else on his roster. I think it's usually just the, uh, in this game, the Dragon Ball characters that they incorporated. 
but I went from Tenkaichi 1 to Tenkaichi 3 just to kind of showcase just how drastic these changes are from game to game you know um, it's still very much appreciated um, when you do see Tenkaichi 2 how the series evolved but when you see Tenkaichi 1 right next to Tenkaichi 3 I mean you really appreciate this was only two years after the fact um, just the evolution and growth that these games had at the time you know that's why I always say the PS2 era was just the best for creativity development um, you know games like this were really always able to kind of have such massive upgrades from game to game because they were so passionate about it but because it you know didn't take you know billions of dollars well billions is you know very exaggerated but millions of dollars for you know the smallest kind of technology you know so you had the cool license games for like very small basic times you had a lot of replay value with these games because they put so much extra stuff in it that wasn't just kind of like online grindy kind of nonsense lots of uniqueness models um, this game obviously has so many different outfits too I think Tenkaichi 2 might have more but maybe I'm just uh, as the kids used to say tripping with that one because I mean even Kijia Scouter um, you get his really cool um, planet Arlia I believe it's called um, outfit there and that's one of the coolest looks and any Dragon Ball character in my opinion even if it looks a little goofy if we're being honest that actually came about because um, when the manga was coming out or manga I'll pronounce that right I know there's a lot of people that are probably pissed off at that um, they didn't really have it where what the colors looked like for these characters so that's what when they came out with the Saiyan Saga I believe that's what they just kinda put you know the colors on for them that's they just kind of had the free reign i guess at that time before they actually fixed it to what uh they were originally intended to and uh i think it's a pop version of this i think the the pop version of this particular outfit is like by far the most like expensive pop i think i've ever seen it goes for like I think tens of thousands of dollars last time I checked which you know those things are subjective so you know prices change and maybe I was exaggerating a little bit I can't quite remember but I remember it was way more expensive than you'd want it was like a, I think a San, Diego, a San Diego Comic Con exclusive hence why it was so expensive but I mean I would I would love to have that pop honestly just not for you know thousand dollars <laughs> and as you can see in this one I'm doing a little bit better you know I'm not a uh, the man here yet or anything like that I'm not really hitting my stride or anything like that but as you can tell I'm actually competent in this one now I decided to do this big world martial arts tournament just to kind of add some variety to it because we've seen the uh, the stage so many times oh boy that's some tough talk even small things like this um the Vegeta stuff you can look at all of his attacks and you can see like oh you know he used that attack uh, against Zarbon the dirty fireworks attack I used in the last round his ultimate technique you know, I used, um, or he used it against Kui. So it's cool. This series really did a great job of using all these moves as references. And yeah, there's a lot of characters that have, you know, generic high speed rush, or as you've seen with, uh, you know, Android 19 there, you know, the full power <laughs> blast or something along those lines. But they really did do, this is probably the most detail oriented. Um, series of any Dragon Ball game of all time which so you know verse I haven't played in a while and I never got too into it but it felt like it was a really good step in the right direction I mean people are still playing it you know to this day so you know verse 2 I believe it's still getting updates in uh, 2023 so I mean that just shows how 
great those games are and how replayable all the the massive roster the online seems to be good you know doing missions with your friends is a really good time you know i'm like i said i'm not a big fan of the game but i do uh which we enjoy just kind of even if i'm not that good at it messing around with my brother and his friends online and you know just pretty much hanging out being that guy that pretty much just you know hit somebody from behind or shoot fireballs or something like that to try and help them out for those difficult fights just to kind of stun the the characters And here we go, Vegeta versus Majin Vegeta. I do like the little main games they always gave you back in these days. This one I think actually came with three. I think you've seen all of them now. Is uh, Goku eating his, you know, ramen bowls, and he had Vegeta doing the push-ups, and then um, you know Gohan trying to get the Z swords out. If he get all the Z swords, um, I guess it just all respawns. But it's just kind of nice that they gave you those little nice mini games to do on the rolling screens. Which, realistically, they all just amount to just matching like the A button. A button, I mean the X button, sorry. Guess I gotta get with the program here. Also, the variety of stages in this game are also fantastic. I think this one is uh, where they added pretty much every stage in this game almost has this feature where uh, you can play it at pretty much any time of the day. I think they have noon variants of all the stages, evening variants, and then obviously nighttime, which are always the best in my opinion. Man, he's kind of giving me the business a little bit here. What about the uh, the atomic blast? I think that I'm not sure if that uh, move returns from the Budokai series. Which it is great that we're getting a Tenkaichi Four. I just don't believe it would be as good as uh, the rest of the series. Unfortunately, I'm not even sure if it would play like the rest of it. I'd have to. I really got to look up that stuff. You know, you guys let me know in the comments if uh, there's been any information released and how it's going and whatnot. But um, I just can't imagine all the characters returning and details and stuff like that you know in these games all the modes it's just it seems like it'd be too much for like a modern day studio to do these ps2 games had so much content that i mean i just don't think that any kind of game company would be able to to even you know it would take years to get the same amount of content in same with like I think a, a big reason why they won't remake the Outbreak series directly is because there's just too much content there. I mean they like the Resident Evil Outbreak series as you guys have seen on the channel there's like literally like a hundred playable characters all with different stats. They use like the same base models, the same eight base models but they come with different items, different health stats, damage modifiers, virus gauge modifiers, small things. But, um, you know, different outfits and whatnot. And even, you know, that's not even counting the unplayable characters that were all left on the disc, which is probably like 20 right then and there. But, I mean, there's no way they would ever replicate anything like that in a modern Resident Evil game. They just, they can't. And then all the scenarios even had so many of those, uh, you know, different variants you know it would take you at least like five uh playthroughs to unlock everything in the scenario checklist and that doesn't even you know count multiple repeat playthroughs to get all the cutscenes for all the individual characters and whatnot and there's just so many games that are like that in you know the the ps2 era where they just had so much content because they could at the time yeah, Yajirobe's just... At this point in the tournament, I mean, you know I won. Because, I mean, the, I'm facing guys like Yajirobe, and obviously Hercules coming up. But you gotta stay on Yajirobe, or else he'll, you know, charge up, and <laughs> he'll use his uh, Sensu Bean to fully heal. Make no mistake about it, I mean, Yajirobe isn't bad, because 
um you know he he's pretty weak but uh there's a lot of characters in this game that can be kind of pretty bullshit characters for one reason or another <laughs> so we just gotta you know take down hercule real quick here who will be the champion let's have a good match Show you the power of a Saiyan elite. <laughs> okay, you can practice on me. All right, here we go. Hercule I always felt like was a very interesting character in these uh, Dragon Ball Z games. I, I can't believe I missed that. <laughs> and he got me though. But uh, as you can see, he's doing such minimal damage, and it's a walk-based move. If I remember correctly, there. Most of the time when you use it, no damage is going to happen, but, um, you know, I think like a certain percentage of the time you use it, you know, you get that big amount of damage like you did on me. And then, um, you know, obviously he can't fly, he's got a jetpack. I, I think it's in these ones too, where he just kind of shoots, he just throws rocks at you instead of shooting ski blast. But, I mean, it's always so funny. For a character that people probably mostly never play as, he's just a Joe character, a stunt character. I always loved in these games, just the amount of detail they gave this guy. The amount of love. As Budokai games, it's funny, he was, uh, he's definitely not as nearly as strong as the other characters. But they gave him so many moves and details and goofiness. And um, just the way that the gameplay of those games is set up. That, uh... He's actually not all that bad. Like, he's actually somewhat viable when you use him against, you know, the the in-game CPUs or your opponents or something like that because of how the Dragon Ball, you know, the Budokai uh, move sets and just how the game functions as a whole. You know, that the base fighting and whatnot, it's, you know, a lot different than these games where most people kind of play uh, very similar and at the very basic sense of the game, I should say. But as you can see, there I go, I win. Congratulations. <laughs> and now we just gotta collect our prize money. Z points, and we get the second star of Dragon Ball. But with that, you know, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Ring the bell to be notified of the daily content. And remember to have a nice day.